Greetings, Nick with Sweetwater here. Today we're going to learn the intro to the Jimi Hendrix classic Purple Haze. So grab your first face, step on it, and strap in. <laughs> Purple Haze is just one of the several huge hit songs on the stunning debut album by the Jimi Hendrix Experience, Are You Experienced? Released in 1967, this album plus Jimi's amazing, groundbreaking guitar work literally took the music world by storm. In fact, to be honest with you, it hasn't been the same since. Yes sir, Mr. Hendrix not only single-handedly changed the game, he reset the bar really, really high. As you've just heard, today we're going to learn how to play the intro of the timeless classic that is Purple Haze. Let's start with the dissonant sounding octave pattern that kicks the song off. This opening salvo of eight accented notes are played by the guitar and bass together, and they serve as a precursor to the main intro riff that follows when the drums kick in. Now these opening eight notes are often taught like this. <laughs> That sounds cool, but it's not exactly what Jimmy played, as both in the studio and live, he played it like this. As you've just seen and heard, he's in fact only playing single notes in this alternating octave pattern. What Jimmy's playing here is this, he's playing the B-flat note at the 6th fret on the low E string, this one, and also the B-flat note an octave higher at the 8th fret on the D string, this one. Then he's bouncing between them like this. It's actually Noel Redding's bass line that covers the missing in action E note. While this single note pattern is the right way though, if you're playing it by yourself and you want to sound a bit more like the record, then by all means throw in the E note at the 7th fret in the A string, and every time you hit the B flat note, hit it. Like this. All I'm doing here is picking the E note on the 7th fret in the A string every time I hit a B flat note. So when I'm playing the note at the 6th fret in the low E string, I do this. And then I'm doing the exact same thing whenever I play the B flat note an octave higher on the D string, like this. As you can also see by using my index finger on the low E string, my middle finger for the E note on the A string, and my ring finger on the D string, I can bounce between the octaves efficiently and with minimal movement, just like this. Just make sure you're only allowing two strings to ring on each hit so it doesn't become a mess. Just so you know, that E to B flat interval is known as the tritone, and it's one of the most menacing sounding intervals in music. That's why bands like Black Sabbath use it a lot. Yep, that's pretty evil sounding indeed. No wonder that interval is often known as Diabolus in Musica. The devil in music indeed. That said, let's get back to the plot and the Purple Haze intro riff. After the guitar and bass combine to create the devil's interval and play it eight times, the drums kick in and so does the main guitar riff. This entire riff is in the key of E minor and purely uses the five notes that make up the E minor pentatonic scale, namely E, G, A, B, and D. And that's it, just those five notes. You'll be pleased to learn that this riff can be broken down into eight bite-sized sections or phrases, and they really aren't that hard to learn with a bit of practice. And to make our job even easier, the first two phrases are repeated after you've played them back to back. So this really means there's only six phrases to learn. Nice. <laughs> At this point, I'm going to switch my fuzz pedal off so you can hear each and every note clearly. It's also worth you listening to the recorded version over and over so the way Hendrix plays it gets truly stuck in your head. As the saying goes, if you can hum it, 
you can play it. It's also well worth paying close attention to all the subtle nuances Mr. Hendricks throws in. The way he phrases, the vibrato, the slides, the slurs, staccato notes, and string bends. Each and every one he throws in definitely plays a major role in making this intro so amazing. Let's start with phrase one, which is made up of the following four notes. And here it is again, a little slower. The first note is a slide up to the B note at the ninth fret on the D string with your ring finger, like this. The next note is the D at the seventh fret on the G string, and you fret this with your index finger, like this. This is followed by the G note at the eighth fret on the B string, using your middle finger and giving it a little quarter step blues bend to add a little attitude, like this. That's all you need, a slight nudge is sufficient. Phrase one finishes with your index finger on the A note at the seventh fret on the D string. And as you've just heard, we add some vibrato to close the phrase nicely. This is what phrase one sounds like one more time played slowly. And a little bit faster with some fuzz thrown in for good measure. To make sure you don't get any unwanted string noise from that bent B string note when you release it, make sure your index finger is angled in such a way that its underside mutes both the G and B strings when you fret that final note on the D string. Like this. See, they're muted. Perfect. Phrase two consists of these five notes. What we're doing here is this. After sliding off the last note of phrase one, we quickly slide back up the D string to the G note at the fifth fret, followed by two, yes, two open string notes. First the open D string, then the open E string, like this. Open string, open string. This phrase closes with a slide from the fifth fret to the seventh fret on the A string, like this. That means we're going from D to E, so we follow the open D and E strings with another D to E move. Very clever. And by the way, don't do that slide too fast. You don't want to do this. It's this. So you clearly hear the D and the E together. That said, here's the whole of phrase two slowly. And a little bit faster with some fuzz kicked in. Now, when we play phrases one and two back to back, we get this. The reason I threw that slide in is this. If you listen to the album closely, you'll hear a short, fast string slide down the low E string from the G note at the 15th fret once phrase two is done, like this. He also does this quick slide move again in two other places during the intro. If you listen carefully, it sounds like they were recorded on another guitar track in the studio, but they definitely add vibe, which is why I'm throwing them into my single guitar version. At this point, he then repeats phrases one and two again back to back, and that makes up the first half of the riff. The only very slight but important difference the second time round is that Mr. Hendricks hits a pinch harmonic on the slide down from D to E on the A string at the end of phrase two. A little bit like this. <laughs> A very subtle nuance, but it definitely plays a part in the riff. And once again, just like the first time through, at the end of this repeat, he throws in that quick slide down the low E string. Something like that. The next phrase, phrase three, is made up of these six notes. It starts off just the way phrase two finishes, with a slide on the A string from the D at the fifth fret to the E at the seventh. This is then followed by the G note at the fifth fret on the D string, and then the A note at the seventh fret on the same string. Incidentally, both these notes on the D string are played staccato, which just means they're not allowed to ring. We play them sharply. We don't play this. Instead, we play them like this. Make sense? Here's the first four notes of phrase three played together. Next up is another staccato note. We pick the A note again and then immediately bend it up a whole step like this. 
I personally prefer to do the bend by pulling the string down towards the floor as you've just seen. But bending up like this is good too. Just do the one which feels right to you, but make sure to keep the bend staccato. Don't let it ring. We finish phrase three off by going to the G note at the fifth fret on the D string again, and this time we let it ring and add some tasty vibrato. Here's phrase three slowly all the way through again. And a little faster with some fuzz added. Our next phrase, number four, consists of, wait for it, four notes. We start off by hitting the G note that phrase three finished on once again. And then, just like in phrase two, we hit two open string notes next. This time, though, they're the open A string followed by the open low E. Here's how those first three notes sound. Pretty easy, right? The phrase then finishes with the G note at the third fret on the low E string with some vibrato thrown in for good measure. Here's the whole of phrase four. And again with some fuzz. And as you saw, once again, that slide comes into play. Right, let's quickly recap on what we've got so far. Here it is slowly with some fuzz on it. Close enough for rock and roll. Two more phrases to go and we're done. Hurrah! Next up is phrase five. This one starts off with what is known as a pickup note, which is merely a note played just before the actual phrase starts. Phrase five's pickup note is the open A string, which is followed by a quick slide up the same string with your ring finger to the E note at the seventh fret, like this. So it's pickup note, followed by a slide. The next note is a G note at the fifth fret on the D string, followed by another one step bend at the seventh fret on the same string. But this time, neither note is played staccato. Here are the first four notes of phrase five, including the pickup note. And here it is a little faster with fuzz. The last two notes of this phrase were a quick hammer on from the fifth fret on the D string to the seventh fret. And then we add some vibrato, like this. Here's phrase five in its entirety played slowly. And then a little faster with fuzz. And that brings us to the finishing line, my friend. We've just got to learn the six notes that make up phrase six, and then we're done. Here's phrase six played slowly in its entirety. We start with the G note at the fifth fret on the D string with our first finger. Then we play the open D string note. Then we do a slide on the same string to the ninth fret with our ring finger, like this. Here are those first three notes of phrase six played slowly. Three more to go. Yes! The next two are at the seventh fret on the G string, because we play that note twice. And then we finish off with some nice string vibrato with the E note at the ninth fret on the same string with our ring finger, like this. So those last three notes again are... Here's the whole of phrase six played slowly. And a little bit faster with our good old friend, the fuzz pedal. Here's what phrases five and six sound like when they're played together back to back. And that's it, my friend, the whole shooting match, all six phrases, including the repeat of the first two. Here it is all the way through, played slowly. No 
nowhere as good as Mr. Hendrix, but that was good enough for me. Before I sign off, though, it would be extremely remiss of me not to touch on the three chord shapes used in the verse. The first one is this beauty. And with fuzz. The technical name of this chord is E7 sharp 9, but many people, including myself, simply refer to it as the Hendrix chord, and rightfully so in my humble opinion. The other two chords used in the verse are G major and A major, played in the third and fifth positions respectively. They're not the usual bar chord suspects though, which are these. G, A. Instead, your fretboard hand thumb is wrapped over the top edge of the neck to not only fret the low E string note, but also mute the A string so it doesn't ring when you hit all six strings. Hear what I mean? Jimmy not only used this fingering because he had huge hands, but also because it allowed him to do cool little fills like this one he does on the A chord. That one right there. A quick pull off with my pinky at the seventh fret on the B string. Again. Neat. That pointed out, I'm gonna sign off the exact same way I signed in. Have fun with this riff, I'm out. See ya! Thank you so very, very, very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this, or start at sweetwater.com for all of your music instrument and pro audio needs. Goodbye.